In this lecture, we will be finishing up proteins, and we'll mainly be focusing on collagen, a little bit on elastin, and then a couple other proteins that pop up from time to time. A common type of question that comes up about collagen is about the amino acid composition. So here's a couple things you definitely have to know about the amino acid composition. So glycine makes up the majority of the amino acids. About 33% of the amino acids are glycine, and that's the same for elastin. And if you think about the structure of glycine, I've got it right here, it's got a hydrogen on the R group, it's very small, and collagen is very tightly wound, lots of coils. And so glycine is gonna fit really well into those real tight coils. So here's an example of the amino acid sequence that we'd see in collagen. So you'd usually see in every three amino acids, you'd see a glycine. So for example, maybe glycine, proline, and then hydroxyproline. We see a lot of proline in there, and that's in the beta turns. And that kind of makes sense because collagen is very tightly coiled. There's a lot of little turns and coils in there, and so proline is gonna be a good fit with those beta turns. We see alanine in there, and just as a reminder, amino acid lecture two, uh, the memory aid that we used, Alan has gas when he eats liver pie. And then we see hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. And we're gonna now focus on these two because we see a lot of questions coming up on these two also. So hydroxylysine and hydroxyproline are non-standard amino acids. They're mostly only found in collagen and so they are commonly used to determine the collagen content. So there's tests that you can run to, to measure how much hydroxyproline or lysine is in a thing. And then that helps you to understand that, oh, that thing is collagen. They're formed from the hydroxylation of proline and lysine, and hydroxylation is just this fancy word for adding an OH group onto something. Lysyl hydroxylase is an enzyme, and it's definitely one that we have to memorize. And the first thing you should know is what it does. So you should know that it's the enzyme that's gonna add the OH group onto proline and lysine to make hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine. But don't get too hung up on it because the name of the enzyme actually tells you what it does. So lysol for the lysine and then hydroxylase. So it's adding the hydroxy or OH group. We should know that it requires vitamin C to work properly. And so if we have a deficiency in vitamin C, this enzyme isn't going to work properly and we're going to have a collagen disease. One of the common collagen diseases is called scurvy. And with scurvy, sometimes you'll see it associated with this history of Back in the day, there were these pirates or sailors who frequently had bleeding gums, and the way they fixed it is by sucking on limes. And so what would happen is these British sailors would go on this long voyage, and they wouldn't have any vitamin C, and so eventually their lysyl hydroxylase wouldn't work. And so they'd get this collagen disease, scurvy, and their gums would bleed. And so lime juice and limes began to be introduced into the diet of these British sailors, and it cured this problem of scurvy and the bleeding gums. And so these British sailors were given the nickname of limeys, which the nickname was eventually given to British people in general. The molecular weight of collagen is very large, and that's mostly due to the structure. And so in the next slide, we'll cover this a little more, but it has a trihelical structure. And so you'll see different numbers as far as the uh, actual weight measured in Daltons, but sometimes you'll see 100,000, sometimes you'll see 300,000. If it's 300,000, you know, they're talking about that trihelical structure. And then if it's the 100,000, they're more talking about the monomer subunit. And it's the most abundant protein by weight in the body. This one, you got to be careful for They can get a little tricky with this one. And so by weight, collagen is the most abundant protein but albumin is the most abundant in the blood serum. And so I can't really stress this enough about how meticulous you have to be when you're reading these questions, because every question you have to approach it with the mindset, like how are they trying to trick me? And so be very careful on how you read these questions. And here's a picture of the structure of collagen. I got this off of the Wikimedia Commons website, and so here's the attribution for that. And so it's composed of these chains, which then come together in three units to form pro-collagen, and then and it goes on to make tropocollagen, and then it goes on to make a fibril, and then a fiber. The main difference between the procollagen and the tropocollagen is these little units right here, and so we have an enzyme that chops these end pieces off, and it becomes tropocollagen. Another type of question we can see deals with the processing of collagen, and what type of processing occurs intracellular and extracellular. So here we've got the nucleus, and this is where collagen is made as a gene. And so then it's shipped outside the nucleus inside the cell as pro-collagen. And then those little end units are snipped off 
and then it's shipped outside the cell as tropocollagen. So inside the cell, we're gonna have things 